Hey there, Neely Seelan here with a belated teaching about Lagba Omer, but the truth is it's such a beautiful teaching and a few people said to me, why did you put anything out about Lagba Omer? So I thought, okay, better late than never, especially since this teaching can apply to every single day of your life. It's very profound, so stay tuned. So, Lagba Omer is the 33rd day of the Omer. Lag is actually Lama Gimel, numerologically speaking, that's 33. Fine, okay. No, what does that matter? Well, every single day of this Omer count where we're counting up to receiving the Torah, we're so excited to get it. This is the 33rd day. It happens on the 50th day, but every single day correlates to fixing a particular sense or system in your energy body. Every single day we're meant to fix a tiny, tiny corner of our soul. And the one that we're meant to fix on Lagba Omer, on the 33rd day of the Omer, is connected to the Kabbalistic energy channels called Hud. In fact, it's not just hood, it's hod shebehod, the essence of hod. So you might say, what is hod, <laughs> right? And the funny thing is, we really don't have a good way to explain it. In fact, it's super confusing because hod can translate as glory, like the glory of God, or hod can also translate as humility, or like, you know, becoming contracted or humble. So it's, it's glory and it's humility. It's also considered splendor. It's also correlated with thanks and giving thanks. So what is this word? Well, here's the thing. Most of the Kabbalistic energy channels have words that are not so easy to define or understand. So what the Gemara, the Talmud does is brilliant. They bring a story for every one of these words, right? We have, you may have heard it in your Torah service. We have, I think I messed that up, but you get the idea. All of these energies, the Gemara brings a story to explain what does this word really, really mean. So for example, it's like if I have a friend named Molly, for example, and I say, I have a friend named Molly. Well, how much do you know about Molly? Nothing, you just know the word Molly and that she's my friend. But now if I tell you the story of this time where I was in peril and she came and she got me from the airport and she hooked it up and she made sure I had a place to sleep. And so now you know all about Molly's generosity. So the Gemara does this with each of the different sphere of the energy channels. And here is the story that it brings for Hood. Get ready. Buckle up. It's a little interesting. Okay. So it comes from a Torah portion called Chukat. Now the thing is that Chukat is a portion that is read in the summer. So a lot of people missed learning this story altogether when they were in Jewish school. Okay. Uh, for reference, Chukat is the Parsha with the snakes, the fiery snakes that come and bite us. And then Moses puts that famous uh, copper snake up on the rod. Okay, so it's the same portion. And the Jewish people are traveling through the Valley of Arnon. But something crazy happens, okay? As we're about to enter into the Valley of Arnon, we see like rivers of blood and severed appendages. And it's gnarly and we're bugging out and we're scared and we're freaking out and we think God's like out to kill us or something. Yeah, it would be very, pretty terrifying. I don't even want to think about it. But then the Gemara tells us, but what truly happened in this story that explains what Hod is, is that we were walking through a valley, right? So how is a... Ah, this is so Israeli cafe. Some woman's like screaming at the top of her lungs. I like moved to the side to be very quiet. <laughs> Get take the girl out of America. All right, so back to the story. So a valley is defined by the fact that it has two mountains on either side. Now geologically, the way that it's explained that this particular valley was formed was that these two mountain sides were initially one. And now geologically speaking, wherever on one side of the side of the mountain, there was like a protrusion of rock. On the other side, there was a, a it, like a receiving cave because they were once one. And so to the same thing where there was a protrusion of rock on this side of the mountainside, there was a cave here. So our enemies were laying in wait for us in all these different caves. And God made a miracle to save our lives and protect us. And he smushed the, the mountainsides together and then came out this river of blood and these severed appendages. So that's what actually happened is that God was busy saving our lives and protecting us. What we saw was the aftermath and we just interpreted it as the worst. And believe it or not, this is the story which explains hood. So now let's take it back to our definition. The glory of God is not always revealed in our lives. If it was, we would think everything was great, but we don't. There's hard times, there's difficult things, and there's things that profoundly scare us and terrify us, just as the Jews in the desert. The glory of God is to say that all the meantime, while we're freaking out and we're panicking, we think things are bad, God is busy planning the sweetest life-saving attempts for us. God is like taking care and protecting us, 
even as we freak out, even as we bug out, even as we're discontented, even as we're terrified. And so now you can kind of understand why the word hood can mean also glory and splendor, but also humility and thanks, is that this teaching, this night, where we illuminate the darkness because we realize that it's always illumination and that God is always good, is this opportunity for us to be in humility and to give thanks, um, even if we can't see the glory of God or all of the splendor, or let's say even in the moments when we can't, is that we can tune in to trust and realizing who our God is, which is like this force that loves us the most and is always protecting us and saving our lives, even in circumstances where it looks super bad or terrifying. And you can apply this on a personal level, a national level, um, but I even dare you to apply it to something in your life right now. And so that is why Lagba Omer, I think, is celebrated in such a big way in the Holy Land because it's admitting to, Hod is also admission, it's admitting to, it's giving thanks to, it's being willing to celebrate in the darkness that there is a great light. And again, that's also why Lagba Omer is the day where we celebrate the Zohar because the Zohar is called the illumination. What is it illuminating the fact that the things that you don't even see, there's great life and great love in them.